Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And in this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with relations and functions, uh, we're going to concentrate on what's known as equivalence classes. Okay? And actually this is our second example. So this is, I suppose, example example two in relation to equivalence classes. But let's actually define what we mean by an equivalence class first of all, and then let's show actually some of the consequences of an equivalence class in particular, how to identify the equivalence classes for a particular equivalence relation uh, and also just to show that them equivalence classes actually form a partition uh, of the set that the relation is actually constructed on so the definition that we actually have so our definition okay uh, we actually need an equivalence relation in order to generate these equivalence classes so let's say we have one so given given an equivalence okay an equivalence relation relation or on a set A. So what we know now about or this relation is it's an equivalence relation. What does that mean? It means it's reflexive, it's symmetric, and it's transitive. Uh, and more importantly, it's a relation, so it's a subset of A cross A, okay? Because that's the definition of a relation. A relation is simply a subset of a cross product. But this relation, which is a subset of this cross product, is an equivalence relation. So given an equivalence relation or on a set A, okay? Well then, for 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 all values in A, so for all A, that all values that are in the set A that the relation is built on, okay, the equivalence, the equivalence class, okay, of this value that's in A of A, okay, denoted, denoted, uh, let's say square bracket A square bracket, okay, is simply, okay, simply the set. Okay, uh, the set of observations or members okay, uh, of A uh, that have the property that have the property the property the property okay uh, that uh, X is related to A. Okay, so really what we're saying is that the equivalence class A is simply equal to the set of x's uh, that are that are in a such that the x is related to a so let's have a look at an example okay let's have a look at a, a quick example so let's say let's say that a is the set that contains the values one two three four and five okay let's look at the digraph associated with this so let's look at the digraph uh, let's say we have one we have two we have three we have four and we have five and let's create a relation that's an equivalence relation so it's it's going to be reflexive so all of the all of the the self loops are in the relation okay uh, it's going to be symmetric so let's actually put put some let's say directed edges okay and once you have a directed edge going from a source to a destination we have one returning so now this is symmetric it's reflexive and also transitive so let's make it transitive. Well, actually, let's leave it now because it can actually be vacuously transitive, which is which is important. So actually, this relation here, which is represented by this digraph, let's call it or is equal to the set of ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, uh, and the edge going from 1 to 2 and from 2 to 1. That this is a relation because it's a subset of the cross product of A with itself. And it's also an equivalence relation because it's reflexive. We see the self loops. It's symmetric because anytime we're leaving an edge, we're coming back from it. And it's also vacuously transitive. And what we want to do with this is to create, to create uh, the set the set of equivalence classes, 